take the trap bar off now and then get the ends off. One loose. in there, isn't it? <laughs> Lovely, mate. Them, aren't they? <laughs> the disc off. Got both CVs and shafts out, uh, stub axles are off. I just got to strip these down for the swivels, um, the bearings, there's no play in them but I may as well do them and I want to do the seals as well. Swivel housings, so I'm going to chuck them on. Nice one, RS Chris from Saddleworth, you're a good man, thanks very much for them pal. Help mate, feed the sheep, what we got today mate? Hang about. There we go. Look at that. that. Sweet potato, digestives, quavers, and shreddies. Nice, that, isn't it, mate? Proper scram. That's the long nose two pin diff which come out of it. But I have got this four pin short nose. So that's a rear diff out of a 110, that TD5, and it's a four pin and sadly done any miles this, I know it's absolutely mint, that's why I saved it. So, I did do a conversion on my green ting where I fitted the short nose rear diff into a front axle casing. So what you do is, obviously you knock all the studs out, weld them all up, and then you have to do a bit of grinding and then cut the diff pan off the back and then re-drill all the holes, set it all up with the half shafts in to centralise it perfect. And it's not a bad conversion, but on the uh, green thing, I reinforced it as well with some box section and bits of steel here and there. So I'll see what I've got knocking about. I may as well do that as well. Yeah, I know people say that the short nose, it's not as strong because of the distance of the short nose isn't as long as the long nose. 
and it puts more stress on the pinion bearing. Um, and, but I've had one in my green thing and I've give it samurai hammer for years and years and years and I never had any, you know, like noisy bearings or anything or problems with the diff, so it'll be all right. And also, because of the long nose in the standard setup, you have a shorter prop, so sometimes you've got to get, you know, the triple yoke prop, which I don't like anyway. Um, with this one, all I do is get a wide yoke prop, just a standard prop, and then just grind out the yoke. And I've never had a prop go on me on the green thing, so... I'll do a similar setup on this, I think. Oh, studs out. So when you place the diff on top of the casing, on the short nose four pin, um, the crown wheels offset to one side by five mil. So you have to grind this section out here. Same on the top as well, grind that section out there. Then you have to cut the diff pan off because there's a little bit of grinding you've got to do there and you've got to space out the diff pan or put a different diff pan on. I usually weld all these holes up first and grind and flush and then I mark all the other holes up and then re-drill them. And then you have to contend with the diff pan then, whether you make your own or put a later one on or modify one of these and get to that in a bit. That's enough there on them. What I'm going to do first is weld them all up and then grind it. That's them all welded up and a little bonfire. Whee! So I'll grind all them back when I've done all the ring. So I'll let it cool down and get a bit of grinding done. close there now it took me ages that so got a big dent in there so I might try and just cut it there and salvage that bit. I might put a full pan on, but I might not do yet. Depends if it fits, because they have got another cut off of one of these with the big recess in. So, see how it goes anyway. It's ready for the off, mate. There it is. Get that out. Anyway, I think I'll see if it fits first. Flip it over. I think now it's just catching on that bit underneath now. So you can see just where it's catching on the bearing carrier bolts. So a little bit more grinding on there. And then we're somewhere near. Just grinding them little bits out there. Another two on the other side. And a little bit where the uh, crown wheel goes and that'll fit then. So I've just welded all the back of them holes as well. So it's all nice and tough. So I'll grind all them back again on both sides. And then uh, I've ground these out. And then just these two a little bit. I'm gonna try and get this knocked up a bit. And then it'll fit. So I've ground all them welds down now. So they're all nice and flush. And then I've got the bits ground at the back there. I've even got sort of knocked that dent out. I know it's rough like, 
but I don't know what I'm doing with that pan yet. So yeah, all the welds are there on the back as well. So it's nice and tough. There's them grinds there where I've ground them out for the uh, diff bearing carriers. So I think it's time for a little bit of a trial fit. now is I get the half shafts in I know I've not got the ends on but I'll get the shafts in just to centralize it rotational um, and then I've got a mark up scribe all the holes ready for drilling but yeah she's there just so I can get to this on the other side of So yeah, it's not bad that. Might just take a tad more out just for expansion in a couple of areas. And that's not bad. And, and then I'll see what I can do with pan then. On the last one what I did, I, I chopped off a 110 rear pan because they're like in one piece and just welded it on flush with this. But I'll see what I can do with this anyway. But yeah, not too bad that. So that's the shafts in, all nice and centralised. So it's bang on in the middle, so now I can scribe all these holes in. And once I've scribed them, take the diff off and then dot punch them all and drill them. Happy days, mate. So I just scribed it all in with the little pointed implement. So took the half shafts back out. So I'll lift it off now and it should be all marked alright then. So there's all the little markings there. So all I'm gonna do now, dot punch right in the middle of each one and then drill them out to the right size so the studs when they go through they're nice and tight so I can knock them in so they'll uh, be all right on the little splines And a 9.5 mil, that's the right size you want. That is the one. So when you get them in and you knock them in or pull them through, they'll grip nicely. Belting, mate. So I've got a bit of box section which I'm going to chop up and reinforce and weld on the top there. So that's the rough shape of it. Just left that section in just to keep it a bit stronger. Just got to neaten it all up and then start welding it on. Get some big welds on there and just start knocking it round and welding it. Same with the back, start knocking it down and welding it and then get some plates on there. I'll just do a little bit down there just to reinforce it. So start of it. You get the gist of it anyway. Yeah, 
Yeah, I've got some hefty welds on there now, so that's not too bad. And then, still, still red hot. There on that side as well. So what I'll probably do now, is just cut a triangular piece out there. Uh, for both sides and then just a little strength fitting box section there as well and then concentrate on the pan so I've made that little plate as well so that just goes over there like that and then I'll weld it on knock it round here flush just helps reinforce it a little bit more Nice and strong that. Smoking. So that's that section all welded on. Just welded it right around there as well. It's not going anywhere that. And really does toughen them up that. So I've got my two pieces cut out there. There's actually a bit of this. So I just cut it in half. <laughs> just like that. So that one will be going there. Just got to nip a bit out of there. But yeah, like so. So I'll weld all that up and then get that one on the back. Where's my wire brush gone? Not bad that. It's nice and tough. So same again on the other side now. So that's all done now that. Should be well strong that. Sealed it at the end as well, so no rain can get in. So just the pan now. So that's the old pan. Like I say, it was all dented on that bottom edge. So I've just cut a bit more off that. And I've knocked that dent out. And this is a, a pan, what I've got off another one, which I did years ago, which I ended up putting a different pan on. So I've just leveled all that off. And then I'm just gonna plonk that on there and weld it. And it's spaced out a little bit. It's probably spaced out a bit too much actually, but better safe than sorry. So I weld all that on, and then I might just do a bit of reinforcing at the bottom. Might put a strap over here. I'm just knocking all the studs through before I weld the pan on, just makes it a bit easier because they're a bit tight. That's welded all the way around now. Just uh, might put some water in it, make sure it's all sealed before I reinforce it. We're all right there. Don't seem to be any leaks anywhere anyway. So, bent me piece of metal. And a little stump <laughs> with my sash clamp and that's me off cut in my diff pan as a template and we're not too bad there bit of old checker plate six mil off 
happy days, mate. So I'm doing a bit of origami, just making some little cardboard templates. So the idea is stretch that middle one over there and that one weld up to it. Same again on the other side there. So I've made a big ring there, like you've seen, bent it round the tree. Just an old bit of checker plate there, which I've all ground off. So I'm going to actually weld it all to it and cut them sections out of this old checker plate there. It's quite thick stuff that. So I've got them bits cut out. Just got to do a bit more shaping on this one. But these fit all right. You can get a good weld around them all the way around. I've had to bend them a little bit as well. Same with that one, I've had to bend all that one. But yeah, not bad from a bit of old checker plate. So I've welded most of that on. Put it right round the bung as well, all the way around there. nice and tough that so I've just got this piece to sort out over there I've got to do a bit more reshaping and that so I've got that centre section on as well there well with it all around there and welded it up at the top there should be nice and strong that pretty solid that thing so I'll carry on with uh, just cleaning it all up and then get it ready for painting then That's all the axle casing painted. And I've even done the swivel housings as well. And the brake back plates there. I think that's going to be plenty tough enough, that. Absolute beast. Well, the calipers, calipers are actually recons. Just took these stickers off. So that's good news, isn't it? And all the pads come out dead nice and easy. No seized pins or anything. So I'll strip them down, give them a wire brushing and a painting anyway. So that's the hubs and the calipers painted as well. That's another boring job. And this is just landed, it's my loft brake kit. So I've just got the power spec one, standard size, vented. Good. So they're the pads. Yeah. Washers and bolts and stuff in there. Some pins. The big nuts. Yeah, might be good discs anyway, so happy days on them. Sound, mate. So got all that lot. So it's just a matter now getting it all built. I can't resist it, I chucked a bit of purple on last night. <laughs> anyway, she's ready for building now anyway. All bits are done. I chucked a bit of paint on the diff as well. So, um, I've not actually pegged this diff because I'm thinking of putting a, a locker in it at a later date. So it'll do for now anyway. So yeah, I'll get it all built up. On. All nicely sealed. Nip up all them now. That's both the swivel housings on. on. So 
So that's both half shafts, both CV joints, uh, the brake back plates and the stub axles on, on both sides. Nice then. Not bad. Get the bearings in now. So that's pretty much it, other than the calipers. So I've just got to put the calipers on and the pads in and the pins and everything. But yeah, it's gone together all right, actually. So that's it, axles pretty much done and dusted. Just got to get some track arms, heavy duty ones. But yeah, well chuffed with how it worked out that. Like I say, I've done one of these before where I've put the short nose diff in a, a normal front axle casing. I know it's a lot of work, but yeah, may as well have toughened it up while I was doing it. So yeah, it worked out all right that. So yeah, even looks good as well. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. So thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.